Hey guys, what is going on? It's Fen here again. So today I've got a release 15 tutorial for you guys, and it's about grass. Um, it's a new feature inside Cinema 4D. It does have its limitations, um, so it's not magnificent, but it is decent. Um, they could have done so much more to it. I don't know why they didn't, but um, yeah. So these are the two things that I made uh, yesterday, and um, I'm going through how to um, do some of these features. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, so let's get started, I suppose. Um, so I've got Cinema 4D release 15 here. I'm going to create a object. I'm going to put on the lines. I'm then going to give this um, some subdivisions because it's important, uh, especially when using vertex maps, that we do have <coughs> subdivisions as well. Um, you don't necessarily need them. Um, I just like to work with them. But yeah. Um, so what we're going to do um, is make this editable because in order to use the grass you do need an editable object. So with this we're going to go to the floor object and we're going to use grass. And that's going to do two things. It's going to one, give us a tag with the material and it's also going to create that material as well. <clears throat> so the grass itself is very self-explanatory. Everything that it says it does, it does. Um, let's just go through the limitations of this first. Um, <clears throat> the first limitation is you can't view it in the viewport. Now, an option to view it as splines would be ideal, so you actually know how tall it actually is in the viewport. And just general um, general information about it, um, you know, how, how the den density is, you know, how thick it is, um, all that information is required however the only way to get it is by rendering um, and the reason this happens is because it's actually a post effect and the post effects happen after or during rendering um, so it's like when you add a glow it doesn't actually show in the viewport it shows after so <clears throat> excuse me with them um, with them type of post effects it's difficult to gauge how it actually looks so you have to do a lot of rendering which is kind of um, annoying really but that's one limitation the next limitation is um, customizability in terms of the thickness of the grass now yes it's for grass but like hair it can be used for grass it can be used for fur it can be used for hair it can be used for rugs etc now with the grass, um, generally in like splines and stuff, in like a um, an extrude, for example, uh, they they have an option to either um, draw your own spline, so it can be um, thick at one end and thin at the other, and that's what it lacks um, here in this actual um, you know material. If they did that, it would be um, much better, but I guess. It specific, they specifically designed it for grass, so I guess we can't really complain too much, but that is a limitation. The, um, oh, the other limitation really is that it's not dynamic. Now, there's no option to make this grass dynamic, so for instance, if I wanted to drop a ball onto this grass, I couldn't get it dynamic because it's a post effect, so um, again, that's a bit of a letdown. Um, so if you did want to create grass, that was dynamic, blowing in the wind, etc. Then you would have to still use the um, hair um, in order to create that. But that being said, um, let's <clears throat> let's continue with the tutorial. Um, so, if we open up the settings, they are pretty self-explanatory, as I said before. You've got the color of the grass, which of course changes the color. You've got the color texture, which you can pick a texture. Um, which will then colour the grass. You can also mix between these to get a blend, which is really nice. You've got the length of the grass. You ho also have the thickness of the grass as well. Now, this is a double-edged sword because if you're working to real scale values, grass is not 70 centimetres tall. Um, grass is like, you know, between 3 and maybe 10 centimeters tall and same with the thickness it's not two centimeters in the width it's about point centimeter um, so working in real scale values if you bring these down you will need more density however if these numbers are larger you will need less density just to give you an example here 
let me bring this grass um, icon up a little bit and you can see here we've got some decent grass however if I bring this down to um, 10 by 0.5 you can see straight away we have tons and tons of less grass so it's not particularly great so what we would have to do is increase the density um, and it's 100% in density we can go higher we can go as pretty much as high as we want so that's almost um, you know a thousand it's 907 but you can see it's taken a lot longer to render um, and you know that's the thing that you've got to kind of balance out how high are you willing to go on density um, versus the the blade length and of course width um, so I like to keep these relatively high just because it's much much faster uh, and I put this about one so that looks pretty good I'm gonna bring this density down to about 50 for now um, because we don't need all that density really um, the <clears throat> as well keep this open for you guys um, the crinkle is basically what it says, it crinkles the grass up like it's been sat on or stood on something like that. The bend um, is also a very big limitation because the 100% bend is like that. Now grass, you can fall grass because it's very flexible, you can even put it into multiple circles. With this you cannot go higher than this 100% which isn't any good to be honest. Um, it's just, it's not flexible enough. You could add a little bit of crink, crinkle in there to kind of emphasize it, but it just doesn't really work because it does put it in different directions. So unfortunately, it's not the best result there. But again, I mean, it's not too bad. So if we render this out, you, this is what we get, something um, pretty cool. I might actually increase the height to maybe um, 200. There we go. We've got something crazy going on there. I'll reduce these down a tiny bit as well. There we go. We've got a lot of grass there. Um, so let's say we're happy with the grass. We're happy with everything, um, except we don't want a, this section on the side. Um, so how do we do that? How do we get rid of grass? Um, because we've got grass here. It's basically populating this um, this object. Um, well, the way to do it is you use a density texture. Now, the way I like to do it, which is the most robust way, is to grab your disk and then click on your points, go to tools and go down to set vertex weight. Put this at 100, hit OK, and then you want to paint by double clicking on the uh, vertex map and you will get the brush. So basically what you want to do now is you want to, <clears throat> we want to um, erase um, parts of this where we don't want um, grass to grow. Let's just say this part here. So as we paint over this, it's basically saying wherever there is yellow, um, was cream colour, there will be grass. Wherever it's red, there will be no grass. So that's cool. So let's open up our texture again. And you can't just drag and drop this into here, unfortunately. You have to use a vertex shader. So you will have to go to density, go down to effects, and pop in a vertex map click on that then drag and drop this in so now when we go to render you will see this section here doesn't have any grass however everything else does and that's one of the reasons why you actually need a lot of polygons for this to work um, ideally um, I don't know if there's any other way to use vertex maps um, on a polygon basis I don't often use this um, but it's the easiest way I've found of actually doing this you can in fact use a um, alpha map um, but that would require you to UV this object take it into Photoshop paint your um, alpha map and then bring it back in because you, there's no way to offset it inside of this grass material there's no options in here when you load in a texture to offset it left or right which is a bit of a pain um, so that's pretty much the only way you can do it so once we've got all that set up, we're happy with our grass um, and we want to render this out. Okay, so let's do that. Oh, well this grass doesn't look particularly great and why is that? Well, the reason it doesn't look particularly great is because um, grass is very, very light and shadow dependent. That means if you have poor lighting and poor shadows, your grass is going to look like crap, much like this. 
So let's see if we can spruce this up a little bit. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the render settings and I like to change it to physical renderer and I like to change it to progressive. That way I can actually see the updates in pretty much real time, especially when working with lights. Um, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to create a camera because I like this position. I'm going to put a protection tag on the camera so we don't move it. And then I'm going to create an area light. Now this area light, I want it to be fairly big because we do have a big piece of grass. And I'm going to move this up. I'm going to go into one of the side viewpoints so I can see when this light reaches relatively even. And then what I want to do is I want to aim it, so I'm going to rotate it a little bit, facing you know, about maybe a 35 degree angle here, and I'm going to move it out. And then I'm going to change the color of the light to something like a really nice warm orange color. And I'm also going to um, go to details and put the fall off to inverse square physically accurate. And then I'm going to reduce the fall off like so. I'm going to duplicate this light and I'm going to change the color to a blue color and then I'm going to rotate this around like so and I'm going to move this to the back as well like this so we have two lights in the scene so far. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back into this viewport and we're going to render this out. So as you can see, straight away we have um, a slight difference. Um, we have this one and this one. Now it looks pretty good, it's getting there. However, the problem is that it's just not good enough. Um, there's no contrast between the grass itself, which basically is giving you this multitude of colours that looks kind of cool, but there's no shadows in order to um, separate them colours. Um, so the thing that we need to do really um, is go into the render settings, put it back to adaptive because this is going to be a final render. Grab both of them lights and turn on shadows and then render out. And you will see the difference between these are massive. Now if it is too dark, which it might be, looking from this, the front is a little bit too dark, then that's where we add in key lights to brighten it up. We don't want to use any specific colour, we just want to use a light in order to brighten them dark areas up. So from this, um, I'll show you once it's rendered out the, um, the beginning and what the end result looks like. Now if you want this grass to be more specular, um, basically reflecting more light, then you would just increase the wetness in the settings which I'll do before we render out again, so you just so you can see the differences with that. Um, so as you can see, the grass looks pretty damn good. Um, so from this to this looks 10 times better, but as you can see, the render times are a lot more, and that's because of just the amount of shadows. Um, you can turn down the quality of shadows depending on how close you're going to be looking into this grass. Um, so you can play with the settings there. Uh, well, let's go into the grass. Let's turn up the wetness to about 70. And then what we will do is we'll grab one more light and we will change this back to a white color. Go to the top and rotate this around like so. And then we just want this to be pretty much in the same angle of the camera like so. And then what we want to do is just reduce the overall intensity of this light because we don't want it to be massive. We just want it to give us a little bit of um, key light at the front. And then what we can do is we can um, then again hit render and you'll see a difference straight away in terms of the, the brightness because that is like the most noticeable thing. So if we just quickly go up and down from these, you can see how light and dark uh, just that one light, it just makes a huge difference and it is really, really important when lighting grass, especially grass, um, that you have shadows. Shadows makes or breaks your grass. And of course, if er certain areas are, of course, darker, you can lighten them up. I do not suggest adding GI to this because it doesn't really give you that much different in terms of results. 
but it will give you um, increased render times. Same with ambient occlusion. If your render is lacking shadows on the bottom, then of course you can go in and um, add ambient occlusion, but it will increase the render times. Um, one thing I forgot to um, do is make a new material and put on a dirt map here, turn off the specular, and put this on bottom of here, and we can use cubic and set this to 30 by 30, and then if we render that out again, uh, you, you'll see the difference, it looks um, pretty damn amazing. Um, so my thoughts on the grass, um, it's decent, it definitely can um, be improved uh, tremendously to be honest. Um, it only has literally, I'd say about three uses, <clears throat> and that's grass, um, fur, and probably a rug. Beyond that, it's it's not really that good because you're very limited in terms of um, how far the strands bend, the dynamics of the um, grass as well. Um, you know, beyond that, really, I don't think there's much use for it. It it does make making grass easier. So if you are an architect and you do um, architectural portraits, then this is a good, um, you know, addition, really. Uh, and that's really where this actually is implemented in. Um, even though I'm using Studio, this is actually implemented in the, in the architectural visualization, which is pretty much used for that purpose. So I think it is really aimed for that instead of uh, motion graphics and stuff like that. But overall, it, it is nice. It does give you some really nice results. And it looks fantastic. Um, you know, like most things, they do have limitations. Um, but I guess it depends how you can get past them limitations and, you know, take it far beyond that. Um, I guess my solution would be if you needed um, a certain part of grass to be dynamic, you could use this um, as, let's say, the backdrop. And for that physical... Um, grass that you're going to be using as dynamic so windy stuff like that in an animation you could just use hair and try and match the grass up in that way um, and perhaps that could work um, but yeah that's pretty much this tutorial so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed it if you've got any questions or if you get stuck please leave them in the comment section below or you can PM me uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, rate the video and of course leave a comment because it really does help um, also I will be leaving um, this pack here this uh, grass goodie pack it has my two scenes in and these textures that I've used as well as the screenshot so you guys can um, have a look at the scene and have a look how I set it up uh, it's pretty much you know how I went through and uh, this tutorial um, but they're there for your disposal so guys thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed and I shall catch you next time peace